On the last Sunday of July 2006, the atmosphere at the main Sunday Mass in the Franciscan Monastery in Kraljeva Sutjeska was different. For the first time since the war, Anto Andrich had returned from Switzerland to his hometown with his wife to celebrate the sacrament of baptism in the same church that his ancestors had over the centuries. The Andriches, like the majority of the 10,000 Croat Catholics from the region, had been forced to leave their home because of wartime devastation. From this parish, which is almost seven centuries old, out of a pre-war Catholic community of 13,000, the majority had been dispersed throughout the world. Mostly elderly citizens, about a thousand, are all that remain. Korolyeva Sucheska is just one of the many examples of places from which the Croats from Bosnia and Herzegovina have been hunted and forced to leave. The elders of these communities are now left at the mercy of political wheeling and dealing, forced to leave the homes in which their ancestors have lived for the last 13 centuries. Everything began with a war that the Bishop of Banja Luka could never have even imagined. Startled, we watched as the war advanced in Croatia because our neighbor's house was burning and we really feared that it would spread down here. We observed the convoys of army vehicles as they passed on their way to destroy Croatian cities and villages. We heard about it on the news. The Yugoslav army, which had been financed by the Croats themselves, as well as the other nationalities here, which had always budgeted to educate officers and soldiers, and to buy arms, now was going to be used against us. It was horrific. The international community reacted contrary to the expectations of the people, about which the Archbishop of Sarajevo, Cardinal Vinko Puljic, testifies. At that moment, the international community took sides with the more powerful counterpart. They dispossessed, weren't even allowed to arm themselves in defense, and that will probably remain one of the biggest disgraces of the whole war. I too am against arming people, but they should have defended the weak. In the chaos of disbanding Yugoslavia, Bosnia-Herzegovina, in which three different ethnic groups live, Serbs, Bosnians and Croats, was paralyzed because of inner political oppositions, not having any joint policies about the coming war. Not only do the inhabitants of Bosnia-Herzegovina belong to different peoples, but to different creeds as well. The Serbs are Orthodox, the Croats Catholic, and the Muslims are completing a process of forming their own nation, calling themselves Bosnians. The Serbs in Bosnia-Herzegovina embark on open warfare against those who, up till yesterday, were their neighbors. There is no mutual defense. Territorial units, poorly armed, are trying to defend themselves. Politics, warfare, vested interests, historical facts and other forces all come into play and take their toll on the shoulders of the weakest in society. In the Catholic village of Modran, not far from Deventa, 60 miles from the river Sava, Anja and Ante Gostincha live with their children. From the peace of their everyday lives, they are thrown into the whirlwind of war. The worst day was on the 31st of March 1992, when they started shelling us. You just lose your mind under those circumstances. You don't know what to do, where to run. When those first days passed, it just became a case of watch out for the grenades. They were falling around us like rain. It was awful. On the 25th of June, one of my sons, who had been at home because he was wounded, got on his motorbike that morning and said, 
I'm just going to see how my lads are doing, just to see how things lie. When he saw the line of defence crumbling, he came straight back and said, Ma'am, get your papers ready. Because he had already told me some time ago, get all your personal things together in a bag. But I hadn't taken him seriously. I just thought, it's not really that bad. It's not happening to us. When he came back, I understood that I'd have to leave the house. But I still didn't realise that I was leaving the house for good, not to come back. Two hours hadn't passed and the place was swarming with soldiers and tanks and everything. The livestock had been set loose, cattle were wandering, pigs, chickens, wandering in the road, astray. But I still didn't grasp that I was leaving my home. I still thought we would be going back, until Bosansky Brod fell and the bridge on the river Sava was destroyed. When the church of St Elijah was destroyed and I couldn't see the spire anymore, then I said, my home is gone. It isn't the first time that the people from here have been forced to leave their homes. The history of the area is scarred with fierce interpersonal conflicts. Often the European powers themselves provoked the clashes in order to protect their own geostrategic interests. On this European battleground, apart from the great losses to humanity and material damage, unforeseeable consequences were created for the future community because of the destruction of civil and religious institutions. The only institution that has constantly participated in the destiny of this country for the last 13 centuries is the Catholic Church. Bosnia is first mentioned in historical documents as a location of Christianity as far back as the Council of Solin in the years 530 and 533 AD. The Croats inhabited these parts in the 7th century and they embraced Christianity. The centuries that followed were filled with overlapping of and confrontation between Eastern and Western cultural influences. From the time of the Great Schism, the fact that Western faith and culture took precedence in this area went unquestioned. Bosnia was a part of the Catholic world where not only the Latin language was used, but there was also a strong tradition of church services in the church's Slavic language. In the middle of the 13th century, there was a huge splintering in the history of Catholicism in Bosnia and Herzegovina. It was at the zenith of the Catholic Church's power, the time of the Fourth Lateran Council in 1215, Innocent III and Honorius III, the time of Latin universality. There was an effort to Latinize the Bosnian Slavonic Church, which had Cyril's and Methodius's tradition of using the Glagolitic script in liturgies. Not being able to carry out the mission completely, in 1250 the Dominican bishop Ponza moved the seat of the bishopric to Jakovo, in the territory of the Hungarian Croat Kingdom in order to lessen political influence in church life. The result was that part of the Slavic priesthood, which had belonged to that diocese, organized a separate bishopric, and a schism ensued. So there is a discontinuity there somewhere, let's say between 1250 and 1340, lasting almost a century. More precisely, in 1339, with the establishment